Do you want to become better at Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's combat system and dominate your enemies? Well, here are some essential combat tips that you will need to know, and hopefully they'll have you destroying those bosses and mobs in no time. But this is the first part of a two-part series that we'll be doing, with even more advanced character-specific tips coming in part two. One of the coolest and more powerful things you can do in Rebirth's combat is actually using aerial attacks, kind of like Advent Children style combat, and each character will have their own way to get into the air and combat enemies while in the air. An easy way to get airborne is to actually look at your skills and if skills have this icon next to it, then they will put you up in the air after the skill is finished. Some powerful moves that do this include Cloud's Firebolt Blade or Reverse Gale for Tifa. Since many of you will commonly be playing Cloud, you should know that you can easily get into the air by doing a dodge using Circle and then holding down your basic attack button square and this will have you fly over and dash towards an enemy, doing some damage and a massive gap closer which then puts you in the air to do some aerial combos or abilities. Some of our favourite moves to use while in the air or to get in the air include Firebolt Blade, Disorder, and while in the air, the Aerial Onslaught. Firebolt Blade is particularly good because it sends you into the air doing both lightning and fire elemental damage. Meanwhile, Braver will actually have its potency increased if used while in the air too. To help you stay in the air, you can also mix in Bullet Barrage, which is a synergy skill with Barret to stay up in the air. For Tifa, her Reverse Scale is easily weaved into her combos, and Yuffie has a dash similar to Cloud to get airborne too. One of the most powerful aspects of being in the air during combat is that you can freely dodge in any direction and it's incredibly fast and easy to use. It will help extend the time that you're able to stay in the air and give you a bit more room when attacks are incoming, as well as helping you plan your next move. Another really awesome thing about doing aerial combos is that they seem to ignore the armor of an enemy. If there's an enemy with a particularly hard shell that you usually bounce off of, going into an airborne state and then attacking them will allow you to keep on hitting and thus build up that ATB even easier. Next up, the stagger system is where you put an enemy into a down state in which you receive a damage multiplier bonus for all damage that you deal during the stagger window. You can even increase the window itself and the amount of bonus damage with various different skills. So the best players out there will be looking to ensure that enemies do get staggered as quickly as possible, and the easiest way to do that is by pressuring them. To pressure an enemy means to put them in a pressured state where their stagger bar will build up a lot quicker, which is shown underneath the health bar in orange orange. Once this bar is completely filled, the enemy will then become staggered. Each enemy, however, has its own pressured mechanic, which you can easily find out by using the Assess Materia and scanning an enemy. The way that you can pressure the enemy that you've scanned will then be listed on the screen, and this does vary from enemy to enemy, but the most common thing to do is basically hit them with their elemental weakness, and that usually pressures them. Another amazing thing that you should definitely try out in-game yourself is that the Time Materia, which once leveled up will give you the Stop spell, can actually be used on a staggered enemy to stop them, and this will actually stop the staggered bar from draining, allowing you to get even more stagger bonus damage out. Here's something that is pretty cool and you may have missed, it's that using your unique triangle button abilities during a stagger will actually fill up your ATB gauge a lot quicker than just regular basic square attacks. So make sure that you are using this when an enemy is down, as it will allow you to execute more commands while the enemy is vulnerable with that stagger damage multiplier. Next up, if you want to feel like an absolute boss, then one of the best ways to do that is to get good at parrying and in in Rebirth, this isn't actually too hard, especially if you're playing as Cloud. While using Cloud, if you switch to his Punisher mode, holding down the guard button will automatically parry incoming attacks as long as those attacks are blockable. If you want to take this to the next level though and have less downtime, you can actually weave this into your normal basic attack combo, as by tapping the triangle button to go into Punisher mode at the end of an animation will quickly put you into this counter stance. If you get hit during this small window, you can then see a white effect on Cloud and you will automatically go into a parry. So essentially, mix triangle into your combo when an incoming blockable attack is on the way, and this will see you automatically parry an enemy. But it's good to know that Cloud isn't the only character that can do a precision guard, as playing any of them and then timing the guard button as you're about to get hit will have them perform a precision guard, and the great thing about this is that it increases the stagger on enemies and completely nullifies any incoming damage you would normally receive from guarding. 
If you want to make this even easier for yourself, then you can slot in the precision defense materia on those characters, and when you aim to do a perfect guard, the window to achieve that perfect guard will be increased, thus making it even easier to land thanks to that materia. But it will be very helpful to know that not every attack is going to be guardable, countable, or blockable. The easiest way to know if an unblockable attack is coming your way will be to look out for this little caution triangle sign next to the name of the attack above the enemy. When you see this, you will not be able to guard the attack. Instead, you will need to dodge out of the way completely. If you try to guard, you will get hit, be knocked back, and take the damage anyway, so look out for this icon when an enemy is doing a move, and this will let you know if you need to dodge or guard. Another thing we see a lot of people missing out on is that you can actually increase the stagger damage bonus during a stagger window by using various skills while that enemy is staggered. Characters like Tifa, Kate Sith, and Aerith all have abilities that will increase the stagger bonus, giving you a window to deal absolutely massive damage. For example, if you play Tifa, you want to ensure that she is buffed up with her unbridled strength skill, giving her access to use Rise and Fall and Omni Strike. Doing these during a stagger will not only deal nice damage, but also increase the stagger damage multiplier. On top of this, an amazing thing to do with Tifa is to use her normal uppercut and then animation cancel it very quickly, racking up tons of damage by dodging or pressing the guard button R1 just as the attack lands. On top of this, there are other skills like Aerith's Ray of Judgment or Tifa's True Strike that can easily be triggered with ATB to increase that stagger damage multiplier. Next up is a brand new feature to Rebirth, it's the Synergy Skills and Abilities. Synergy abilities can be a little weird to get used to at the start, but they really can turn the tide of battle. So here are some things to help you out with using them. You can actually see which skills will add to the synergy gauge bars in the command menu as they are shown by these little bars, but they are normally most of the ATB consuming actions like abilities, spells, or items that then increase the synergy gauge. Once you've built up enough of these synergy gauge bars between two characters that have a synergy ability, you will then want to know the difference between the four different types of bonus bonuses you get by using these synergy abilities. There are bonuses that give you infinite MP for a short duration, extend the actual stagger window on a downed enemy, increase your limit break level to do stronger and higher level limit breaks, and ones that split the ATB gauge into three bars, allowing you to do more actions quickly. There's also the synergy support materia that will have you rack up extra synergy skill bars when other party members use their synergy ability. Personally speaking, we found the limit break level increases and the ATB gauge split to be very very good options throughout your playthrough. Unlike synergy abilities, synergy skills are always available to you and can be performed without consuming any ATB, making them pretty strong. To use your synergy skills, you will need to hold down R1, which is the guard button, and then with the corresponding button prompts, you can see which skills are available to you based on your party. The awesome thing about these synergy skills is that they will actually fill the ATB bar of both characters using the attack if done successfully. On top of this, some of them have extra utility purposes, like Barrett's Iron Defense, allowing him to tank more effectively, while Tifa's offensive synergy skills allow her to take to the skies more easily. You can actually see what each of your different synergy skills will do by guarding and then pressing in the touchpad, which will pull up their descriptions on your screen. It's good to know while in Cloud's Punisher mode, he won't be able to block ranged attacks, but with his synergy skill counterfire, you can actually block those incoming projectiles and do some damage back. You will have to time this like a parry, but the window is pretty generous, so if you hit it at the right time, you will send an attack back to your enemy and block that incoming projectile, which is pretty cool to see. On top of this, Cloud's Spellblade is particularly good for a massive hit that is basically free because it doesn't cost ATB. And this next one is a real game changer, which is when you start actually using your shortcuts. They might seem unnecessary when you first jump into the game, but trust us, when you start using these, you will quickly see how you can chain attacks together and keep the flow going, really dishing out that damage to enemies. This is especially important for aerial combos or to just get in as much damage as possible. You can even assign different shortcut skills for when you're grounded and airborne, allowing you to make use of those bonus effects you get from being airborne with certain abilities that you normally can't use while grounded. So make sure to open the menu and set up your short cuts because this is going to make a big difference in the long run. Share down below if you have any extra combat tips that we didn't cover here so we can all learn together as a community and subscribe because part two with more advanced tips is on the way to you soon.